Yo, Real 92.3, Boulay Kev, DJ Head. West Coast. We got a couple legends with us, man. Little brother, rapper Big Pooh, Fonte. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. to the revolution, goddammit. Hey, that's glad to be here. It. You put a lot on us for that. <laughs> I don't know if that's what this is. This but. is the revolution. Hey, I listen, man. it was man. just the interview, but. You, you guys, uh, I'm so glad, man, y'all put out some new music. Thank you, man. The listening uh, and all the Chitlin Circuit tapes and obviously Minstrel Show, like, I just feel like you guys are, you know, as a fan, you guys played a very important part of my hip hop story, man. Thank I, you so thank much, you, man. man. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate it. The listening, I would have that shit on bootleg for sure. It was a burnt CD, but I he think got everybody had selling. Selling. <laughs> he, got his, he got his name for selling unauthorized copies of y'all shit. Nah, nah, I never sold any of y'all shit, bro. Uh, <laughs> bro. It's all good. We, we never sold unauthorized dollar. copies we never of that shit. From it, so, you know. Yeah, nah, right. We never sold yeah. copies of dollar from the authorized shit. So it's all the damn same. Really? Yeah, they still was that shit, was still that shit on money. ABB? It was yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, they still was crazy. ABB, man. Running with our money. They hit a lip. They hit a lip. Yeah, they still yeah, nah, we're still old money off all that shit off listening, get back. Like yeah, we really yeah, yeah, man, they always crazy. Even money. off get back. Yeah, when that I was say, our last album when, for the label. Like when that I was say it. we never saw a check, we never not saw one check. A check. Nah. We well, I mean we did see let me be uh, let me be we fair. We saw a check. We did see a couple checks. We did see Fox, like I a couple. Check. You didn't get your check. Nah, I got <laughs> checks for everybody. Advance or oh, that must have been in the beginning, beginning. The beginning, beginning. Like yeah, we got yeah. like a little, and they were like accounting, and they would send us stuff, and like you get your little mechanical royalties, mm -hmm. whatever, and it was cool. Like I just cut, you know, everybody uh, checks and stuff. Oh man, oh, that shit stopped quick. Uh, quick, yeah. We got like two statements, and then it just was over. And it just hit a wall. It just never happened. So yeah, but. Party over. See, yeah, it pool. was over. That's why you got to get your own attorney. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Listen, we ain't seen no you more You didn't watch Straight Outta Compton, my we nigga? We ain't right. seen right. no more checks. We, yeah, right now, we. It was we. This is a group project. Yeah, we equally damn got it. So, yeah, bro. But, I mean, but that's just the importance of my lesson I learned from that is just that nobody's going to pay you what you worth. You got to create your own. And, and this, this album's know. obviously fully independent? Yes, indeed. It's fully owned by us. That is yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah, and then obviously Pooh. I mean, you guys have done have 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 had such acclaimed solo arms of your careers. You know, Fonte between Foreign Exchange and and you know, Pooh. You you put out solo projects. Like, what what was the you know? Fuck it, we got to finally do this because you know the fans have been asking for this shit for a very oh, yeah, long yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. A real long time. Man, it was it was happenstance, man. Like you know, we we didn't talk for more than a few years and. When we finally started talking again, we didn't. I mean, we talked about the idea of making another project, but we just like, ah, fuck that shit. Like, we, we good. Like, we, we good. That's we, exactly why, how those conversations went. Why fuck that shit? Like, uh, the pressure? Or the, nah, it wasn't even the pressure. Like, just, LB, for me, I think we maybe you have different answers for this too. But I think for me, just specifically, LB just is very, it, it, it takes a lot of bandwidth. Like, it takes a lot. Like, it's, it's anything else we do. You know, like our solo stuff, like the foreign exchange, like just any whatever. But LB is just a completely different monster, it's a monster. and it takes up a lot of Brand time. Means a lot to a lot of people. It yeah. means a lot of people, and it's a lot of people that you know have their hands on your time. You know what I mean? So, so when you step into little brother stuff, like when you step into that world, like everything else gets everything else shuts down. It, it, it's uh -huh. done because you don't have time to, for nothing else. Yeah. So, do you, so when y'all did uh, like lock in, it was not, nothing else going on at all. Like, you wasn't working on your shit. It was you, still shit going on. It was still on. shit going <laughs> on. Like, it just, yeah, it, it wasn't like, you know, I got the management company um, yeah. with our former manager, Big Doe, and, you know, we got artist Luke, who's on Dreamville. Yep, and shout out to Luke. My yeah. man Black Soul and uh, T. Smith. But we had to, I had to basically like, yo, this it's on you now, bro. Like, I mean, obviously I'm available for meetings and, you know, decision making, but I can't be day to day and hands on like I was because this is here now. Mm. Um you know, the music part, like, I mean, we both put out projects right before we started working on um, uh, the the new little brother project. So that was that part was was what it was. We were still you know in saying? fighting shape. Yeah, like we people, were in fighting shape. We were yeah. good to go. And I actually we started the little brother project and I was finishing my RPM project with Focus. Wow. Yeah, wow. Like, Shout yeah to Focus. he had. Yeah, yeah, I finished my solo album. My uh, my great uh, album. No news. Thank you so much. Great man. album, man. Um, that album came out in March, and so then we started working on made a little watch in August. Or, no, no, it was, it was October. October. Yeah, it was, the show was October. Yeah, uh, in October, and at the same time, I was still doing Quest Love Supreme. Yeah, uh, with with Amir, uh, I was doing that podcast, flying back and forth to New York. Um, I was working on Sherman Showcase, which is a show. On IFC, uh, it's like comedy sketch mm -hmm. comedy show. 
Uh, I was doing like a bunch of music and I had a role on that. And um, also just doing voiceover work for like commercials and TV and stuff. I was doing that as well. Like it literally was points where we'd be we'd be in the session and then we'd be talking about, okay, so when are we gonna get up again? Cause I would have to drive three hours to his house and stay at his house for days. Like, oh, so okay. Work. Yeah, we moved and in. I, yeah, I basically moved into yeah. his guest room. And, <laughs> so we'd be sitting up there, be like, all right, man. So, um, all right, we got to pull our schedules out and figure out when we can get together again and shit. Like, because we still had other things going on, which was fine as we were working on the album, but we knew once the album was completing out, that other shit was backseat time. Yeah, but don't you feel like? That's like a, a celebratory moment, though, where you actually have to compare schedules as opposed to where y'all come from. Oh, listen, absolutely, because <laughs> there wasn't no schedules to compare 15 years that's ago. What that's what I'm saying. It's like, where are you going to be on Thursday, bro? <laughs> Same place I'm going to be. Let's get up on Thursday. Let's Let's get up. We got to figure this shit out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, most definitely. That's what's up. Now, something I always wonder from your guys' perspective, because, I, you know, is it ever annoying that, like, you're always gonna hear like, why, what, where, where's Nine that? Because I feel like you guys have made so much music as a little brother and on your own without Nine. Even like Get Back and yeah, yeah, yeah. the Gangsta Grill shit, like ch a lot of Chitlin Circuit pr music. Like, is that ever like, like, it's almost like there's like the Ninth Wonder Cloud hanging over you guys. Like, it's like, um, it's like from a fan's perspective, it's always like, yo, I want to hear the Ninth. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, I mean, not to me. I mean, you know, I, I just look at it like, you know, whatever you come in the game with, you know, I mean, and you know we were each other's introduction to the game you know what i mean like you know that was the first the listening was the first record that the three of us any of us had ever made so you know he, we introduced the world of ninth just as ninth some could say the ninth introduced the world to us vice versa right but it was you know, we put each other on you know it was sure. no one thing or the other so you know when you come in the game like that i mean dude people gonna be asking tina turner about ike till she die True. You feel me? Like, it's just, that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I don't look at it as, um, you know, I think there were certainly points in, in your career, in our career where it's like, God, won't y'all just shut the fuck up about this shit. But now I just understand it as, you know, that's just something, it's just a sign that you really made a mark on, on yeah. somebody and that for you to make something that's still ringing off 15, 16 years in a time where we don't remember people 15 days from now. Yeah, right? like, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'll just look at it as a blessing, man. It's just a, a blessing that, you know, something we created so long ago when we were so young is still relevant and resonating with people to this day. And um, when you reframe it in that way and just thinking of those terms, I mean, you can't be mad about and it. And I, I do feel like you guys did a great job of, like, establishing your guys' sound, like, with whatever producers you worked with, like, whether it was Crisis or, yeah. you know, I feel like, I feel like you guys... You're, the sound's been consistent. And this new album, I feel like, is like, well, it, who were we just talking to that said every once in a while somebody will drop an album that's like a cleansing for hip-hop? Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I forgot who the fuck we was talking to. Who was to. that? But you know how, like, people, they, they tell you to smell the coffee beans before yeah. you smell, oh, yeah. you smell yeah. a new cologne? Yeah, yeah. Right. so that, that right. was this like the... shit we needed. Wow, wow. Hip-hop needed crazy. a shower, and y'all gave it to me. It's <laughs> 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 fucked up right now. Yeah. What, Take this Dr. Bronner's name. But don't you think from a fan's perspective that, like, there is a little bit of pressure to deliver this, the nostalgia? I mean, obviously, it's new shit. No. Right, right. None, none? Nah. Who say none? Nah, fuck nostalgia, man. Okay. Like, you can't you can't compete with people's memories. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I can, there's nothing I can write in the year of our Lord 2019 that's going to compete with where you were the moment you first heard Little Brother. And memory is unreliable. Like, I think memory. A lot of times, people tend to cherry pick memories. I think that's because true. you can think back. Oh man, the 90s. Oh, it was so great. The 90s. The 90s. It's like, dude. Do you really want to go back to the 90s? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, do you yeah. really want to go back to a world without Instagram? Do you really, <laughs> you know what I mean? A like, world without you, cell phones? A world without Uber? Like, do y'all really want to, you know what I mean? <laughs> let's of course be, let's not. Be real. <laughs> a world with, like... Where you had to p print out map quest directions? Yeah, straight shit. You wouldn't map even do that in the nah. 90s. Nah, you had to go get the map from the trucks, though. The, 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 the uh, Thomas guy. Right next the to the Thomas showers. Guy. The Thomas, I, right next to the showers, nigga. Our first tour in 2003 with Hieroglyphics. We were on tour. We were, dry, we were in the RV, and we had a real-life pimp. And a deviant <laughs> who were driving the RV, mm -hmm. and and the pimp and the deviant were two different people. They weren't oh, the okay. same. A pimp and yeah, a yeah, 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 pimp yeah. and a deviant. Double your dysfunction. Yeah. So we you, we would have to go to the to the truck stops and get the Thomas guide and map out like our route. Where are we going for the next Hell day? Yeah. Like, and that's 
2003. See, I wasn't driving then. I just remember my parents doing that shit when we would go like. Yeah, my mom was doing that, that shit. That shit was a fucking yeah, headache. But that's man. 2003, dog. Yeah. But see, but see <laughs> like, you're right. I don't want to go back to that shit. <laughs> I, I, I was a sophomore in high school. At all. You don't. But yeah. I do remember being with the homies. Shout out to my homies, um, the Misfit, the, the homies from Long Beach. They put me up on y'all. Like, mm. and that, I had never even heard of. I was like, who? The, how did y'all find these? This group? They not even from here. And they put me up on a little brother. And that's when I. It was obviously Mr. Stroke. But but yeah. yeah. Um, when I first got got wind of y'all, I remember them. They used to just sit around and just listen to y'all shit. Wow. That was the event. That way wow. it wasn't like, oh, we on our way here. We, you know, it's not the car story. It was right, right. We're going, hey, let's 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 link up and listen to this shit. Shit. And it was like, Crazy. so the, you can't compete with those types of memories and creating that shit. But I gotta, I want to believe that you know what that shit means to people like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. It's it's you can you can speak on. Oh that. yeah, no no no. We definitely know what it means, and it's like. For us, our thing has always been we want we want people to grow with us. You know what I'm saying? Got you. So it's like I don't want to compete with that memory <laughs> from 15 years ago. Yeah. I want to help you create a new memory, you know, now. That you'll be nostalgic about 10 years yeah. from now. Got you. <laughs> like when they, when they dropped that album in 2019, oh, my God. Like I needed that. That was a palate cleanser. That was, <laughs> right. that was fucking sorbet and shit. Like I needed them coffee beans. So it, it's, it's one of them things like that's that's what our – you know, I don't want to say what our aim is, but that's just something we always thought about. It's like I don't want to take it back to that. I want to always move forward, and I, I hope and pray that the people move forward with us. Yeah. Do y'all feel a way where it's like you know how the, the the stigma is? People don't allow the fans don't allow artists to grow. Like we want the old Kanye, or I want the old Hove, or mm -hmm. you, shit like that. But then what you're speaking on is accept us as we are currently. Yeah, I don't think if it's I don't know if it's this sort of thing of the fans don't uh, and allow people to grow because because I've always said this you know because there's I've heard you know you hear artists say like oh well you know the people they may not get it I want to do this but the art the people may not get it and I've just always been believer that not having faith in the audience is really not having faith in the art you feel me like it's it's not oh that. the audience don't get it. No, nigga, if the shit hard, they'll get it. <laughs> right. Make some hard shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And hard meaning just it's got to be, it has to be it's great. Yeah, it's got to be dope. It's got to be So dope. for us, I, you know, when we were making this record, you know, there was certainly um, in our minds, we knew what it meant to people and mm -hmm. we knew what little, brand, what little Brother, what that brand meant to other people. But the most important question was, what does this mean to us? Yeah. What do we want Little Brother in 2019 to sound like, you know, for us? Because at the end of the day, it's gonna be us that's gonna have to get up and sing and perform this shit yeah. every night. And you know, and and you know, when we were sitting down like doing the record, just going through everything, we wanted stuff that we would be excited to perform. You know what I'm saying? You wanted songs that's like, yo, I can't wait that we ride. I know this shit gonna kill. We do it live. And so that was kind of the driving force. And um, not necessarily being looking into nostalgia, but just saying, all right, where are we now and what does this sound like now and what is the best representation of little brother now and um i mean judging from the response i mean people they they get it people fuck with it what, yeah oh it's a great album what, thank somehow, you so much, man. um i wanted to know personally what's some, like one of the hardest things about putting this album together because i feel like what he said about the, okay <laughs> I, I, not the business not the business okay. i'm talking personally okay was it the group is it schedule i mean not scheduling but i'm saying what did y'all go through mentally how to put uh, as far as putting this shit together because the ninth yeah. other again Huh? Learning each other again creatively. Okay. I mean, shit, learning each other again, period, as men okay. as well. Yeah. Got you. Um, I think that was probably the the thing that we were real adamant about taking our time and doing is because you you got to give, we had to give each other space because we've grown, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. since the last time we worked together. And you have to give each other space and respect the fact that each other has grown. So even though we kind of fell back into natural, you know, our places together, there still was growth in that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so... Just having to, just learning each other again was the biggest thing. We it was knew, like a reset. Yeah, we knew that reset. was going to be the thing for us. Mm -hmm. And so before we started, we was like, yo, we're going to do this together. Like, together, together. No concept, no words, no tracks were picked, none of that unless we did unless it Unless we together. both was on it, yeah. The reason why I was asking that is because I was having a conversation about um, Outcast mm -hmm. and like them doing another project, but it's been so long and like all that kind of shit. So I was kind of figuring out like how y'all felt. Yeah, about that, that shit. was yeah. That I mean, definitely learning each other again and then learning. I mean, because again, it's like it's 
I mean, it's like a marriage. It's like you, it's your lady, and then there's the marriage. Right, right. But y'all been separated. It's separate. <laughs> right, no, nah, straight up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, straight up. And so, yeah, so with us, it's like, yeah, it's like there's Fonte, there's Pooh, and then there is Little Brother, which is his own thing. And that's the part where you have to kind of negotiate and find out, okay, how much of me is in this, how much of him is in this, you know what I mean, You to make what that thing is, man. And that's that was probably the hardest part. I mean, we went through, man, easily – Shit, like shit. Of a few hundred, I mean, uh, beats, like beats, of easily, just easy, like five, I say five hundred yeah, beats, easy. Because we we set out, we after you know a few missteps in the beginning, we realized what missteps. Working with knife, working with knife. But I mean, yeah, like, just, like, we saw it just okay. wasn't going, it wasn't going to work. It was so my my thing, my thing was we did a we did one joint with him, and what well, we did a few, but it was one in particular where I got to the point I was like. I was adamant with that. I was like, yo, I don't like this shit. You don't like the production? Or you I don't, don't, I don't like, the like the song. song. I didn't like the song. I didn't like the song at all. I tried it. I was like, I don't like this shit. And I had that breaking point. Like, yo, I'm not compromising. Gotcha. Like, in the past, I would compromise. I was like, well, if everybody else like it, uh, I guess it's cool. But this time, I was adamant. I was like, yo, no, no, no. We can get rid of that shit. <laughs> like, and I this was don't a like Was this it. a record that, like, Ninth was a big fan of? He was, if I recall correctly, I think he, I, I think he was. I think we all agreed yeah, at that think, point yeah, that, that it was like, all right, this is just a cool. So cool originally, when you guys originally went to make this project, ninth was like the idea. And originally, yeah, 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 originally, yeah, that was that was it. Was, it was, it was all three of us originally. It was all three of us originally. There was a breaking point where it was like, it was just like, nah, it was like, nah, this ain't gonna work. All right, so let me ask you this: and like you said, the misstep in the the putting together of the project was it how you felt? Or was it? Did it have anything to do with how you felt personally, or was it all just the nah? Song? It's that the was, music, not nah, man. When we sit down and make shit, is and I listen to beat. I tell people all the time, I'm like, dude, it's very simple. Do this shit make me want to rap or not? Yeah. Bottom line, like, and it's and that's the thing with art is just so immediate and it's subjective, but it's just like, dude, either you hear something and you're inspired to create or not. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that was pretty much kind of what it was. So when we were, you, you talk about just the hardest parts of the record, the hardest parts were just when you know something, like when you know, like I know in my heart, in my bones, what Little Brother's supposed to sound like, but we just got to find it. We got to get to it. And, you know, when you're working with great producers, like, when you know, Focus, Black Shout Down, Black Milk, Knots. The Thing Knots, Knots. just a monster crisis. When you work with guys like that and, once you figure out what it is, like they play something, it's like, yo, that's it. Because that's when they like, oh, I okay. got more of those. I get it, right? Yeah, they get yeah, it. Yeah. So, but getting to that point, man, shit, we probably, man, we we went through easy five, six hundred. I mean, but easy. don't y'all have a relationship where you could have that dialogue and it not be friction? Oh yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, I think now, like at this point in our careers, and then just all the homies we work with, I mean, we're all like late thirties, early forties, so. Now, you know, you don't really take rejection personally. Right. At least I don't. You know what I mean? Um, it was a big, I think just my work in TV and, like, voiceover stuff really helped me get over that. When I was younger, like, I would take rejection really personally. But now it's just a thing where, you know, like, if you do a, you do a read for something, and it's just like, well, the director wanted to go with this. Like, it'd be, it would be stuff I would read for, and I wouldn't get. But then I would hear what who got the part. I I get it. And I'm like, dude, that... That just wasn't for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They went with something like that ain't even me. So you just don't take it personally. It's just either something works or it doesn't. And if it don't work, then you just move on to the next thing. Was it like strictly just like the quality of beats with Ninth at first? Like you think he, he was just not bringing his best, his A game to I mean, the little I, brother shit? I don't know if it was that. I mean, I really. Rhapsody got some nice beats. I, didn't, I don't know if it's that. <laughs> I, I, I think mean, with, I, I think with I, us, it was, it was, it was something different. It was. It was different. I think everybody wants to know what it was. Like well, we well, we've talked about it at length. I mean, in other interviews. No, I, I mean, know. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, it just really. I mean, if just uh, just to kind of paint it with just a broad stroke. I mean, yeah, I, I think it really was just we truly just grew apart. You know what I mean? And just you know what we didn't see things the same. Yeah, way. It, and like, that was and that was it. And once you saw that, it was just like okay, well, rather than trying to fit this square peg in a round hole. Mm -hmm. Let's just admit that we're just a round hole. What about the conversation, though? Isn't there some sort of conversation that you have to have at that point, like with each other being down for so long? Like, you do have a conversation, um, but even that's nuanced. Yeah. <laughs> All right, right. It's I don't so know what that's like, like, I, 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 Exactly. Even that is layered. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's layered I, I, I'll put it like this: 
we have a different as we as in me and Fonte have a different relationship because we we've done everything together. You gotcha. guys done a lot of music together. Not even just music. We've toured together. Right, right, right. We've lived together. We was in the goddamn fire together. Yeah, we was like in the fire. We in the trenches. Y'all's together. brothers. Yeah, absolutely. Knife wasn't there for that. Got you. So it's just a different it's a dynamic. Different, it's a it's different just dynamic. Sense. You know so it's a, it's a working relationship as opposed to being relationship. very uh, right. Got you. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, hey, on the album, you say were you driving Uber at a certain I was point? Just yeah, bro. Man. <laughs> yeah, man, I drove Uber, man. Like, you know, I tell people all the time, look, man, this game is full of peaks and valleys, man. And I'm just a dude. I'm going to do what I need to do to make sure I got food on the table, and my should. bills are taken care of, and that was something. I substitute taught. I worked for Amazon. I did a few different things, but that was something that allowed me the flexibility to still do things that I needed to do mm. in the industry. So I didn't have to worry about calling a supervisor and faking sick and shit and be like, I need, uh, 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 I need two weeks off because I got the flu. Like, I could just stop, go on tour, come back, count my money. All right, I got about a month. Then I got to go on back out here again. Like, mm-hmm. so... Yeah, and I did it, man. And, and you know, people be like, oh, man, shit. You, man, I thought you was getting it. It's like, man, listen, man. Most of these people ain't getting it like you think they getting it. Mm, right. so I like, think that being transparent is an important thing, too, man. Yeah. I thought that when I heard you say that, because remember when we was downstairs, I was like, yo, it's some shit I wanted to ask you about. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But I was like, I'm going to save it. But, yeah, I was... Um, I was talking to somebody else about I don't want to put their business out there, but they were also doing Uber yeah. and Brother. Postmates and stuff like that. And I was like, I don't think it's nothing wrong with that if you doing it's, what you got to do. It's an honest day's work, man. It's Did, not. It's not. I tell. It's like yo. It's 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 a, it's a sad state of affairs when we would applaud somebody for going out and you know doing something illegal to facts. make money, but shame somebody out. Doing something Let's honest, get honest right. to get make money, like 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 think that's ass backwards. Did you see the thing with the actor from the Cosby Show? And yeah, they, yeah, definitely. They, and they yeah. were killing him for working at Trader Joe's. Right. And he <laughs> ended up getting another job off that shit. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, man, tra- tra- Trader Joe's got good benefits, bro. West Coast. Nah, right. there's no shame in that, bro. There's no shame. And I think now, I mean, I don't think that's so much of a thing. You know, maybe like back, you know, twenty years ago, like when the record business was just just ignorant with money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like in the late nineties or whatever. But now with the way this shit is now, dude, man, everybody's shit is a castle. It's a fucking sand castle. Dude. Do you like, remember how crazy it was when Kanye first came out and he talked about working at the gap? It was like, Oh shit. Someone's actually talking about having a real job. Right. 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 Did you ever get recognized? Like obviously, you know, from uh, your hometown, a couple times. Like legend. it's, it's <laughs> the funny thing is we, we noticed this. We tried this. This is an experiment. We tried at high road day. Uh, back in September, when we're apart, mm-hmm. people they look be like, mm, "You look familiar." If we together though. We together. They like, know oh, shit. Like, yo, that's little what? brother. So, <laughs> so for me, it was always people that get in the car, and you know, for people that kind of knew, and they'd be like, "Hmm, you look familiar." <laughs> <laughs> hmm. And then they'll wait till they get out the car. Man, anybody ever told you you look like somebody that raps? <laughs> I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> they have. Oh. It was a time I was. I had. I made playlists that I could play for whoever was in the car. They didn't have cussing, and I had a foreign exchange song in in the playlist. It was actually three, but one was on in particular. Somebody got in the car, was like, "Oh, foreign exchange. You don't know nothing about that." Okay, I actually yeah. know a whole <laughs> lot about that. You're right. No. <laughs> okay. All right. If you say so. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, that was weird. I, yeah, we 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 were in an Uber together, and damn, um, got didn't get recognized. It was wild. Like and we then, were. Go ahead, sorry. Oh no, 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 it's fine. Nah, it, it's because we people know our music, but they don't, may not necessarily know our faces. So it's always that thing of, I think you're this person, but but not. So you had crazy. you ever had a you know what's going on with like the ride shares shit that's going on right now? People getting kidnapped and yeah, yeah, yeah. all kind of shit. Have shit. you had any crazy stories and while you were driving? I mean, I've had some, man. I mean, not to that magnitude. What's but something crazy that's happened while you were nah, driving? I ain't kidnapped nobody. <laughs> no, I know that I'm saying. What's um, something crazy that happened while you were driving? Man, I remember one time I um. I pulled up, it was like a Saturday night, and, you know, it was after the clubs, the bars are closed, and I get a request, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go home. And I get this ride request, and I pull up to a curb, and I see it's like it's like two look like frat white boys or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I see two more coming. I'm like, all right, whatever, they're about to get in the car. So they got across the street, and the light turns green, so they supposed to stop. Keep walking. End up, this car had to stop. He one white boy slapped the hood of the car like you motherfucker, bam! <laughs> slapped the hood of the car. Oh, your car? No, no. Oh, the, the, the other car. car. That was about but to you hit knew them. they were heading your car. They was heading to the <laughs> car, and so I'm looking, and and I end up, and everybody stops and starts looking. So I'm boxed in at this point, like I can't even leave. 
So I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, shit, it's about to get real. Dude hops out the car. He must have been having a tough night. Oh, the, dude the, hops the driver out the car. Of the car that the driver he's... hops out the car, black dude, and he went straight to putting them putting them paws on. Like, it was no no talk. No talking. Nothing. He just went straight to work. About that action. Then this whole boy comes <laughs> out the car, and he's trying to stop it. And then next thing you know, it's like two of the white dudes beating up the one dude. So then the homeboy jump in, and it's like three versus two. And then the other white dude who actually ordered the ride, he's trying to stop it all. And I'm boxed in. Like, because I don't want them in my car at Hell this point. Hell no. Cancel I know the, that ride. I, I know the <laughs> adrenaline is pumping and shit. Right? <laughs> cancel that bitch. Right? Yeah. Well. And so it, but it's, this, the thing is, I know I can cancel it, but because I was boxed in, they was going to get to my car anyway. Either way, they're going to get in your car. Because he knew yeah. that was the ride. That was the guy. Oh. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, shit. So I was like, okay, they ain't gotta go far. After he caught the fade with the black. After he caught the fade, <laughs> all right, like <laughs> deuce fade. Dude, dude come over, he come over, and he he bleeding out his nose. So oh. he, he got it. I said, yo, you ain't getting in my shit with your nose bleeding. <laughs> so he got to take his shirt off and wrap his face up, and they get in the car. And before I pull out, I said, hey, look, man, I know y'all adrenaline high. I just need y'all chill out for this five minute ride. We start rolling. All of a sudden, they start getting hype in the back. Like, man, you see me? I was on that motherfucker. And I was ready, like, ready to highlight. I, I just stopped in the middle of the road. You stopped the car. I said, hey, listen, man. If y'all say another motherfucking word, everybody getting the fuck out of my car. <laughs> like, I'm not dealing with this shit. Because I can't take, I can't fight for a white boy. I'm sorry. Like, I, I'm on blood thinners. I can't do it. West Coast. I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? I can't do it. You know? So I'm just like, yo, I can't, I can't, I can't. Four white boys shit. off the liquor, too. Off the, off the liquor right. and the fight. But they they ended up the the dude who ordered the ride. He knew his um his rating was on the line, so he he cussed him out, told him shut the fuck up, and you know I I skied it to the uh, skirt, got him, got him like, get the fuck out of my car. Was it blood it's in your over. car? Nah, 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 I wasn't blood in my okay. car. Nah, I was, no blood nah, on the leather. So that that was one of the stories, man. I had people throw up, man. I in done, your car. Yeah, man. So what do you do? What's the protocol? When somebody throw up in the back seat? I get... take a picture and get paid. Like yeah. I take the picture, we'll have to cover it, yeah. and then I start cleaning it up. I and got, then your I, account gets hit. Oh, immediately. There you go. Two fifty, one fifty, depends on what what it is. Man, somebody got my car, <laughs> with, and they kicked. They like had the mud on their shoes, but it had dried up, so it was just a lot of dirt. And I was I was smart. You had the Charlie Rick James boots I on. Had, <laughs> I had covers on my seat and on the floor, so all I had to do was just pull shit out the car, and my mm. shit was clean again. And I seen they had kicked all this dirt and shit up in the car. I took a picture, sent that shit in the Uber, got like $125. I took all that shit out the car, went to Walmart, bought like $15 seat covers, and was, you go. was back in the game again. So West Coast. You know? Yo, it's, it's crazy, uh, Fonte. One of the <laughs> original reasons why I fucked with Drake is because in an interview, he said you were one of his favorite Oh, yeah, rappers. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, that tells me a lot about Drake's Drake as an artist. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. And then obviously you guys did think good thoughts with Elzai. Um, w- 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 talk about your relationship with Drake early on in his career because I know he was a, a he you know was influenced by you. He was a big LB fan. Like yeah, um, yeah. I mean when we first started doing records, I mean God, this is I mean this is 12, 13 years ago now. Oh, eight oh nine. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, it was around that time. Um, I want to say, but this is before. This is pre so far gone. This is comeback before, season. This is comeback season. Oh, comeback, comeback season. season. Yeah. Comeback season. So um, but yeah, at the time, uh, my my um my our manager, uh, Big Doe, he he just hit me. He was like, yeah, so man, um, I just gotta email this kid, um, Canadian cat. He wants to like do records with you. He's on this um. The show Degrassi, and I was like, Degrassi still comes on, like, because I remember we used to watch that shit in middle school back right, in the right. day. But I was like, Degrassi, that's that's still on. He was like, Yeah, he was like, Yeah, it's this kid. He's on Degrassi. He want, he raps and he wants to do some records. I was like, Okay, well let me hear him. And so I like I immediately in my first mind I was like I'm not doing this shit. But I didn't. I heard him and I was like, Okay, he actually can rap for real. It's not just somebody on TV just trying to damn have a little hobby. Like he actually can really rap. So I heard the jams. I was like, okay, he can rap. I, I fuck with it. So we did uh, the Think Good Thoughts joint. Then we did the, well, first we did the Don't You Have a Man record with us. Both of us was on it, me and Pooh, Dwayne when Dwayne was on the hook. And then we did Think Good Thoughts. And um, that was kind of just it. And, I mean, you know, I didn't know anything about him. I didn't know. Uh, it, it was really just off the strength of just the talent. Like, I heard the music and I liked the songs. Did you guys ever meet up, ever? We have, I've never met him to this day. The most we've, I mean, we've. Like texted a few times like years ago, but we've never like we've never met face to face. He got to run you that, on the phone. He got to run you that verse. 
Man, I was well, shit. He well, I I actually did a verse for uh, I think it was supposed to be for Take Care. It was the second album for real. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did I did a verse for that, but I think you remember which record it was. I don't know for sure. I what I I think the record because the record I did was something totally different, and I think something happened with the producer who did that track. Something happened with the beat, whatever. But what I think the original version of what I did, I think became uh. What what was the Just Blaze record on the album? I can't remember. Oh, it was fuck. was it Lord? on Take Care? On Take Care. It was one of those. It was like it was the one where he was kind of like going in, like he was rapping. It was that one, and I know Just did it. I can't remember the uh, the title, but I think that's kind of what it became. That was a, that was that's the record that that spawned. It was supposed to be. Gotcha. Yeah, it came from that. I, that's Damn. what I think. Did that's you charge crazy. Drake originally? Like for your verse? Yeah, for the original verse. I mean, but how it much, was how much were you hitting Drake for? Man, it wasn't shit. It was just you know. I can't even remember what it was. I mean, it wasn't like I need twenty five thousand dollars. It was just like standard rap verse prices. So that's I so think crazy. it it might have been like a G or some shit. Like just that's crazy. It was. I mean, it was just yeah. It was. I mean, that was just because again, I mean, he's on the grassy whatever. But we just you know, man it was like yo, man, like yeah, just I I give him a verse. Just it's time whatever. Fucking Fonte from Middle Brother. You know the minstrel shows. You know, classic project, and like you said, like you you weren't even really tapped in with. Yeah, I mean, I just I just thought it this record was dope, and I just did it. And I mean, the thing about it is, like with us, I mean, the thing I tell artists all the time, I mean, money is probably like the least thing that the the most important, the least important thing when it comes to determining if I'm gonna work with someone. I mean, it, it's just really, um, yeah. I mean, it, the, a lot of stuff I've done, the the things in my career that have borne the most fruit for me over the long run have just been things I did just because I wanted to do them. Um, you know, we certainly went through periods in our career where, I mean, we were just talking about this yesterday. Rent like was where due. Rent was due, and it's just like, you it's a verse. Somebody want to pay you for a verse, and it's just like, I don't really want to do it, but fuck it. I, I'm, the first is approaching quickly. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? But now when you're at a point in your career where you can actually pick and choose, and if it's just something that just don't move you, again, the money ain't, that don't move me. If this if I don't, if this shit don't make me want to rap or sing or just do something, then you can keep it. I, you said that um, y'all haven't really spoke. You have never met him, but I'm pretty sure like if you reached out, like he would fuck with you. I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so because there's no incentive to. No, I'm just saying if you one of his favorite rappers, that, that supersedes. There's no incentive. His other for favorite him rapper dissed the shit out of him. Who was his other favorite? Pusha T. Was one of his favorite. Oh rappers. damn, that was I, damn. Yeah, that was. Yeah, he definitely might not respond. Yeah, he won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, yeah. no, 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 no repeats and shit. Nah, man. but I, I mean, but I, it, it ain't, I mean, I ain't pushing. I ain't like this. And, nah, it's not nothing like that. But that yeah, is. it's just, it's just no. There's no incentive, and I'm just saying this objectively. I mean, no, with no whatever. Just there's no incentive for him to do a record with me. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if I, if somebody is one, if somebody I look to, like it don't matter about that. Yes, it does. Well, <laughs> yo, I, mean, take, I mean, I feel like Take Care, by that point, he was a superstar, He was too. already a superstar. The song was Lord Knows. Lord, Lord knows. knows. That was it. Lord that knows. was Lord Knows. Okay, he, yeah, but he, was, he, wasn't, he wasn't who he is now. Yeah, now though. he's like the fucking... That was before, that was before yeah. he was really singing Drake. Let me ask you this, based on this conversation. Do y'all feel like... Do y'all feel like any way towards any other rappers that you might have looked up, looked out for on your way up, and they haven't either returned a favor or whatnot. That's a good question. Um, for me, I feel like Fonte will feel some way. I don't know about Pooh, but I don't. I, nah, we, yeah, I, yeah, like Pooh I don't, man. I mean, when when I did things, like he said, I did things just because I wanted to do them. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, for instance, um, since we were on the West Coast, West when, Coast, when uh, when Dave Free reached out to me about J Rock in yep. the beginning, yep. Um, I just went and looked and listened to what he had, and I was like, yo, I fuck with that, like. And then that turned into meeting Kendrick and then uh, Absol, yep. mm -hmm. Schoolboy. And I was just like, yo, I just fuck with what y'all doing. So it wasn't a thing of I'm looking for the payback. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, yo, I'm I'm just happy to to do what I did. And now y'all all, all have gone on to do great things. And mm -hmm. that shit is dope to see. And, and I just look at it as that, man. Like, for me, it's I just take pride in the fact, like, yo, fuck that. I was on that shit. Got you. For y'all doing that <laughs> shit the way, was. And then, you're probably the first guy to do the singing and the rapping thing. Like I won't say I was the first, you're one but I, I, okay. I mean, uh, I, mean yeah, I think you might be. I, no, I know. But no, I am. I mean, no cap. No, I am. I, I, I am, am God I mean, damn it. That, that humble shit lasted a whole 10 seconds. Yes, man. No, but I want to hear Percy Miracles EP? 
Yeah, that was, that was. I that was the thing shit. I did. Yeah, man, I did that shit, like, all just kind of in one take, fucking around. In, I want to um, hear your take on, on what Pooja's saying, though. Um, Man, so for me, I mean, for me, my answer, because I, I get asked that a lot, and the answer for, for me to that question is very simple. I don't feel angry towards none of these niggas because I don't want to be none of these niggas. Got you. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I don't want to be none of these That's niggas. That's the tweet. You right. know what I'm saying? That's the tweet. That's it. <laughs> That's the tweet. Yeah, bro. Tweet. Like, I don't, you know, I, I, I think, um, again, you know, when you're young in your career, yeah, you do have those moments where you look at somebody. It's like, damn. It's like you're at, you see, damn, they got that role. I, I could have been good for that. I could have whatever. You know, and you see stuff, it's like, damn, well, I see he getting this look, he getting that look, damn, like, whatever. But the older, for, and this was just my journey, just kind of like the older I got, um, the more I kind of realized that th something that is bigger and may look better, it may not necessarily be for you. Mm -hmm. And for me, I just had that realization of just like, man, I like being able to do things the way I like to do them at my own pace. I like to pick and choose my own shots. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, man, I don't, I, yeah, I, nigga, I just don't care, dog. Don't like it's not like it. I mean, I remember it, it was, it was funny. Like we had this uh conversation like a, a while ago where, because I got asked specifically like that Drake question, right? Everyone, everyone asked fucking asked me that. And the thing is, I was like, listen, man, I look at it like a government. So like, if you're gonna overthrow a government, right? If you're gonna come and pull a coup, the government that you put in place has to be better than the government that you're overthrowing or else the people are gonna come to take you out. And do the same shit. And so, you know, and so for me the whole thing with with whenever people compared me to other rappers and was like, yo, you should come for Drake, you should do this, whatever. My whole thing was like, listen, there's no need for me to do that because I'm not gonna serve his fans the way he's serving them. Right. I'm not gonna jump on and do all these damn remixes and right, right, right. you know, <laughs> hopping on records from this. You're not doing none of that. That's out. Ain't none of that shit. Nigga, he ain't it's over. doing none of that like, shit. Like dog. Like so. It's like so that that doesn't even serve. That doesn't serve the 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 audience that he's serving, and it just doesn't serve me. You know what I mean? So my thing is just you know this. The more I get into my career, and and you know particularly with us doing this album, we wanted to curate a space that was that was specific to the type of music we make and specific to the people who get what the fuck we doing. It's not about having you know just. I don't, I don't, I don't need millions of strangers in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't. Your, want... your fans are gonna get this project. Like the people who've been wanting this project. Yes, yes. they, they get it, it. And, yeah. they and they get where it's coming from. They, they get it. They get it. And, I don't and need. If, and if like, new people are introduced to it and love it, awesome. that's great. Yeah. If not, awesome. <laughs> like, yeah, you yeah. tripping. Yeah, I ain't man. tripping. Now even like what? our producer Nico, he like. You know, I was like, you. I bet you've never listened to a fucking little brother. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, no, the the song "Loving It." Uh, Big Vaughn played it, and I. That's the first time I heard little brother. And you know, Big Vaughn, he does the Sunday Server show on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. And he plays some shit, and I was like, yo, that's dope. like obviously, you know, Nico's like twenty. How are you? Twenty six. Yeah, you're a little old yeah, to yeah. not be tapped in with the mission. <laughs> but nonetheless, I I do, I do think it's dope to, that you guys are putting out new music, and and you know, there's a whole nother generation that can be that can be touched by what y'all do. Are we gonna have to wait another like decade for another for us to make music again? No, no, nah. no. For y'all nah. to make music together again. Nah, nah, nah. nah y'all gotta nah, wait a decade. Nah, 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 nah. Top of the year. <laughs> it's more. It's more stuff coming. <laughs> He like, looked like what? He said, what? It's, it's more records coming. Yeah, right. We still working this shit. Nah, but it's more stuff coming. It's, it's more. It's more records coming. We, we, we set a plan. We set a foundation. We got. We got back on course. And, That's a beautiful and, thing. And, and and you know, we we got an idea of what we want to do now. Okay. Um, Nah, that don't mean you about to get a new little brother album every six months and shit like DMX, but every year? I can't even say that. We just have a plan. I take one every I take every course of action. Every twenty four months, I'll take Yeah. I mean, dog, I, I'm not even gonna lie. Listen, man. You said you got 500 songs, bro. No, 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 no. no, no. He said, I said oh, we beats. went through, through 500, 500 beats. Okay, 500 to get beats. them 10, Run 12 that shit. on the album. Nah, see, 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 that's another thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we don't take practice shots, bro. Got you. I what what that. you heard on that album? That's, that's all we had. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? That's Hell it. Hell yeah. So you recorded? Was it how many songs? It's ten, ten. songs. Ten songs, and that's the ten that we got. That's, the that's 10. it. That's crazy. We don't yeah. take. We don't take practice like shots because man. you just wait. You just after a while. I mean, I think that's and hilarious. <laughs> hey man, hey, that, that's, that's just, so fun. No, it's just so. It's just that's not what you hear. Yeah. Nah. People, yeah. The people be like, oh man, I recorded fifty tracks and I picked the best. <laughs> nah, bro. Because you got them. 
Forty five of them shit sound the same. Like nah, like so. And that's the thing. Like and that, and that I will credit. You know that was one lesson that I did learn. Um, uh, well I won't say I learned the lesson so much as he gave me the language to kind of say what I was felt. But when we were at uh, when we were at Atlantic, uh, Mike Karen. Yeah. Um, he was um he was very vocal and he was just we was talking about stuff and he was just saying he was like man you know the thing that kills albums are those almost singles. Mm. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, not good. Yeah, it's like so. It's like if you have your joint Brave heart party, right? <laughs> so it's like you know what I mean. If on Brave and on the same album, that wasn't Uchi Wally on that album. Too? No, 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 that, no, that was the Brave that album. That was is, that's, that's the Black Eye on Stillmatic for sure. Yeah, that was it. Was, like it was. A, a single attempt. A single attempt. But it's like Jovito on the Blueprint. Like no one needed that. Like yeah, we. I wasn't mad. I don't know. Hold on, hold on. We did okay. Now, no, the one we didn't need on Blueprint was Jigger that nigga. Okay. Okay, yep. we didn't need that. We didn't need that shit right. at all. Yep, you right. You right. He could have kept that. Yeah, he could have kept that. So it's oh. like, but it's yeah. those records though. It's like it's those records where it's like, and and that was just kind of our always thing where it's like, okay, if you're gonna write a, a relationship song, for example, once you have a great relationship song, it's like, okay, cool. We've said all we have to say in the relationship arena for this album. What's next? We bodied that. Yeah. So we got to body the next topic. Okay, what's the next topic? Is it? You know, growing up, is it reminiscent? Is it whatever? Okay, so we write that song, get the best version of that. So when we kind of took that as our approach, when you know you got like your heaters, it's like nigga, we ain't. It makes you more efficient. And I think as an MC, as someone who works with words, I think that's more so important than if if you were a producer and you can just make beats and just chop shit up and just throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. I mean, who fucking cares? But as an MC with your words, after a while, you're gonna run out of shit to say. And what? you're gonna run out of you're gonna start saying right, shit, right, right. you know, you ain't even gonna have an inventive way to say it. Mm -hmm. So save your preserve your bullets, man. Like don't just be just, you know. So what you're saying is we got we get a new little brother out top of the year. Is what you saying? I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I, I said more music is coming. Okay. You know the, the crazy shit is I haven't done one piece of music since we finished this little brother album. Really? Straight up. I have done nothing. I have not wrote one lyric. I have not. I don't. I have not listened to any beats. Are you tired, Pooh? As hell. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. It's, I mean, like, dude, I'm 39 years old, man. I've done multiple Little Brother albums, multiple solo albums, multiple guest of features. Of course. And it's like now I'm just. I used to be the the record maniac. Like, yeah, I would, he, like Pooh's output was just crazy. I used to have like at least two, three. Like, well, not two, three, but at least an album in reserve of just, just random yes, songs. straight like, up. Just because I was always practicing trying to get better. That nigga was Pupac. Yeah, I, was, I had him. <laughs> I had him in the day. And, and, then I, and, and now, at this point, I'm just I'm just like, yo, I'm very specific. It's like... Don't practice when I When I have the energy and the inspiration, I go for it. When I don't, I chill. Okay, one, one more thing, bro. Um, and then, I guess, Pooh and then Fox, you okay. go first. Ooh. In the last decade, okay. what do you feel like has your big your, been your biggest mistake, and what would you have done differently? Mm, that's a great question. Huh. I think for me, one of my biggest mistakes when it comes to little brother. Oh, for little brother, okay, yes. Um. Oh, that's easy. Uh, the biggest mistake I think we we had was not properly communicating in the beginning, like we did with this this go round. We chartered a course. Like we we set a plan. Absolutely. There was 100%. no plan. There was no course charting. There was no there was not discussion. Even a conversation. No, it was just plan. like, let's just do this shit. And <laughs> then it turned into a vicious cycle of record, tour, album, record, tour, mixtape. Mixtape. Oh, okay. Like it just turned into a vicious cycle of that. And then mm. we got tired of each other. <laughs> you gotcha. know what I'm saying? And I think if we would have really took the time to say, okay, we got the album, we toured. We did a mixtape. We toured. Let's take time. You do your thing. I do my thing. Let's get a little Let's break. Let's fall back, yeah. Fall back. And then after we do that, then we can come back and figure out, you know, we're going to do an album, we're going to do whatever. And we didn't do that. And I think that that not that led to us to burn out like we burnt out. Mm -hmm. And then that led to us not talking for yeah. five yeah. years. Mm -hmm. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? Because of the burnout. Gotcha. <laughs> like, it wasn't nothing personal when, like, Oh man, that nigga fucking stole money from me or not? Mm. Nah, it, we burnt out, and then in doing that, we got we burnt out with each other. Yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. I think probably um, my biggest mistake, definitely, you know, Pooh, uh, echo what he's saying. Uh, I think one of my biggest mistakes was 
just not communicate, not saying what it was I needed, just not saying that I needed a break. Um, just uh, constantly trying to, I, I took a big part of ownership in Little Brother and ownership in the way of just, again, you know, I, I took failure very personally. So, you know, when, when the minstrel show didn't perform the way people felt it should have performed, um, you know, I really like that shit. Really fucked with that me. shit broke you. You, know you feel like it, it had a, had a um, more of a, men a mental thing. Um, I, I, I won't say say as far as it broke me because it ain't no goddamn rap record finna break me. Gotcha. But you know what I'm saying. But I mean it. It. But it definitely. Um, it. It was. It. It set me back. It was just like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying. And the thing that's so crazy about it, man, is like, like I was on Twitter earlier and I saw. Um, uh, your girl, uh, Ari, Ari Lennox. Ari, Ari Lennox. Like, she was, like, going in and, you know, about the Soul like Train Awards and stuff. Right? right. she's, right, re retired. No she one quit. retires. She quit but she quit. And, like, and she was looking at it, and I, she put up a tweet, and she was like, yo, y'all saying whatever, you know, this, I'm not new to this. I've been grinding since 2009. And I read that, and I just looked at it, and I was like, okay, you're 10 years in. You're just starting. 10 years in music. That's the beginning. The you beginning. know what I mean? Like, so I just didn't think at, you know, at, at the time when we were going through Little Brother, um, you know, in the in the first wave, I remember just being so fucking exhausted and just feeling like, like we had nothing left to say and not even realizing how early in the journey we really were. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's album three, and I'm just like, nigga, okay. Nigga, like, we've been at this shit yeah. for... Yeah. Five years, yeah. nigga. And it's like, oh, five years. That's like, nigga, you you just them just your warm-up laps. You ain't even yeah. hit your stride yet. And you know, so that was um I think that was my biggest mistake, man. Just not not uh not communicating what I needed, not um listening, you know, to my brothers in terms of what they needed, you know what I'm saying? Just not really um being that. So this time around, my whole goal, just kind of as as you know, as the leader in, you know, is what we were doing. I was just like, I gotta listen more than I talk. Like, I gotta I like listen that. and just I respect that and see what it is. And I really, respect that. You know, when, I like that, that you take ownership of it. You know, you most have people to, don't man. do that. Thank you, brother. When you talk about, uh, you know, a minstrel show, I, I, I just remember like you're, you guys are probably the first like act that I associate with the internet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like the forums and shit like yeah, yeah. Man, like the, those days the early days the early, yeah. early days like the slums of free social media yeah, yeah of course of course and i remember obviously the listening had dropped and when i was in high school my boy put me up on it i felt like you guys were like the hottest secret of hip-hop thank you man. You know what thank you. and then the minstrel show came out and it did not disappoint but like you said, I know the video got banned for BET, right? Yeah, well, they didn't play it. Oh, that wasn't banned. even our original concept of it. Like, that whole shit. Which now, just... I'm glad we kind of didn't go with the original concept. Well, that yeah, shit would have yeah, been worse. What, was, yeah. what yeah. was the original concept? The original concept was going to be like a spoof of the Cosby show. Yeah. Oh, that kind of would have been funny. <laughs> right. Like, it would have been funny. It would have been, been very ironic. Ten years later. Yeah, yeah. So, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> I, just, I, I just thought about. It, I was like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It would, it would, it would, it would look a lot of that thing. It would look dope at the time, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't play well. It would have been, oh yeah. So I'm like, now, nah, but like, I feel like the project was. I just did a top twenty five albums of all time list, and I put it in there. Like, I feel like Minstrel Show is a perfect album. Thank what, you. Why do you think it didn't? Commercially popped, or was it Atlantic didn't know what to do with it? Act like you guys, like what? What do you think? It oh was? God, it was yeah. totally that man. Yeah, it was. Didn't know what to it do. was. It was a lot of that. I mean, I mean, listen again. You know, hey, you talk about just taking ownership. Um, I think you got to own. Third, first part. I mean, just starting is you got to start with yourself. I mean, I think us calling the album the Minstrel Show. Yeah. While I don't regret it, and I would never take nothing back. I mean, you. You stand by what you create. You it threw, know what I mean? threw a lot of people off. Yeah, Facts. and it wasn't a thing where Facts. it was it it, it kind of cut people off to us before they even got a chance to hear the music. If we just would have called the album straight out of North Carolina, it's just some generic right, right, shit. Right, 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 right. You know, it probably would have carried them like, oh man, them niggas rapping, they they going in. You know what I mean? But if you automatically call your album the Minstrel Show, then what you're doing it, from the perception of the audience, you know, they don't they feel like you're being like condescending. It mm -hmm. feels like, okay, these niggas, you're not talking to an audience, you're talking at, at them, them. Mm -hmm. and you feel preachy. And that was actually a note that we got from uh, our a and at the time, uh, Reef, uh, Rob Tulo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we played him the album and he was just like, yo, I'm gonna be real with y'all. He was like, look, I love the album. I think this shit is brilliant. 
I think that it's, you know, I like, he's like, I love it. He said, but, you know, I kind of think y'all are, could fall in the daylight territory. And I was like, well, what you mean? He said, well, you know, stakes is high. And I was like, and well, I was like, yes, yeah, stakes is high. I love that fucking album. Great album. And he was like, yeah, I love it too. He said, but daylight with that album, they kind of got branded as haters. And it was something that they never really shook, at least at that time. They, they, from, they yeah. didn't really recover from that. And, you know, it was, again, I mean, when you're making records just kind of in a bubble, Mm-hmm. You know, when to hear that outside perspective, like I was like, man, I never considered that because I fucking love Stakes is High, but I never considered the perspective of how it could look to people outside of just that underground hip hop bubble. But so, then, and also, and also mm-hmm. to say Atlantic, you know, there's no, there's no issue with it. There was no issue with Atlantic. Like they didn't know how to work us because we were one of one. Like, at that time, you know what I'm saying? It was like, we don't know what to do with a group like this. It's kind this. of the same thing that happened with Dilated at Capitol Records. Same yeah, thing. it's like, we same don't thing. know what to do with a group like same this. Same thing happened to Slum at Capitol yeah. Records. Yeah, <laughs> but they... J5 at Interscope. Atlantic, <laughs> right, right. Here Atlantic here allowed us to bring them an album that we recorded in North Carolina on our hard drive. For you, by you. For, for man. Exactly. Listen. They We picked a date. They stuck to it. We named the album. They said, okay. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. And they and let they us do it out. Yeah. what we wanted to do for the most part. And and for that, I will always have respect Facts. to them for that because there's a lot of people who sign and then you never hear from them again. Facts. And that didn't happen to us. It's just they didn't know. Like, I don't know what to do with a group like this yeah. at this and, time. And then, too, gotta... this was at a time when, you know, if, again, you're talking about just technological changes, you know what I'm saying, just in a short period of time. I mean, dude, like the first video we shot, uh, loving it with the shit. The only fucking video we shot. That video was like sixty grand. Damn, and it's like at, the, that, at that time, that's at crazy. that time, that was you know, and that was honestly that was kind of on the lower end. You know yeah. what I mean? Because this is po- like again, we just fell in like a, a funny place because we were like post hype Williams era when niggas mm-hmm. was just spending. Like two two, two hundred million dollars, three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, but pre uh, was it Rick Cordero? Rick Cordero pre era. Rick Cordero era, when niggas was shooting <laughs> shit on the seven D, like yeah, and you know yeah. you just see niggas shooting like the roots, like even like Amir, like, he was say he was like, yeah, we shot a video and it was just like Rick is holding the camera and like I got my laptop playing the joint and it's just like from the outside that shit looked janky as fuck, but that was that was that era, but we were kind of before that. I like what I like what you said though about how they let you do what you want to do though because most yeah. most of the time that's not the case now unless an artist is independent or have a distro deal right and they you just here go the album and they put it out that's it but I like that you said that because I feel like that's important that for artists to know now like it hasn't always been that way nah nah and, and I think too like with when Nas dropped he was trying to put out an album called Nigger you know <laughs> right, what I'm saying right. like no that, 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 no that's the same thing I feel like is the stigma with the Mitchell Show shit. yeah it's it was, like do you really <laughs> want to do this you yeah. know what I'm saying like not quite as aggressive yeah <laughs> right right you can tell let's back it down but I mean but again you know I, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it I wouldn't you know go back that was that it was a reflection of what I understood my art to be at that time you mm-hmm. know what I mean and um you know when, when you're younger and you make those things you know it was so much of for me personally just so much of my identity was caught up in in rap music and um you know, and just at the time when it's something that you care about, the craft, and you just see dudes just, like, doing this this other shit, it's like, damn, like, y'all rapping like y'all don't even halfway care about yeah. trying to be nice, you know what I mean? Um, but now, um, I think my relationship with music and just as an artist, it got better when I started caring less. Gotcha. You know what I mean? It's like the only thing I control is what I do, and I can control just, you know, make sure the music I make has the integrity in it and represents my values as an artist. And, you know, I you can't you can't be mad at the audience for what they gravitate to. You, you know what I mean? The original concept for UBN, which is obviously you you know, you guys incorporated yes. that back into this album. Great skits. Shout out to Rosenberg and everybody. <laughs> yeah, Joe so. Scudder. Um, but what uh what, what was like what was the reason uh what 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 was the original inspiration of, of doing that? Because obviously we got introduced to that on the minstrel show. Yeah, um, with the skits and everything, man, uh, it, it really was just, um, we really just wanted to complete and tell the story, you know what I mean? So um, one of the things for me is just like when, like, putting records together, um, 
everything has to have a purpose. And so your skits, like you can have them. Like if you look at, I mean, you know, like Wu Tang, for example. Yo, where the fuck my killer tape at? Where the fuck? Like the skits on the first Wu Tang album were just Very important. torture, motherfucker, torture. Oh, I fucking just I fucking, memorable you know what I mean? songs. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, in that there's storytelling in that because each one of in those skits they're letting you know what their interests are. Mm -hmm. You know that okay, Raekwon is in the Kung Fu movies. Method Man's mm -hmm. into stabbing people with yeah, I stab you with a rusty screwdriver. <laughs> like that gives you that that that's that's slick. You know what I mean? Right. And so with this, um, when we were doing the skits for this record, um. I felt like we had kind of created just our own universe of fictional characters, and we had to let the audience know what happened to all the characters in the hiatus. So Percy's dead. Roy Lee is now a trap producer. Yeah, uh, you know great. what I'm saying? Um, you Joe know, Scudder's the, a white man. Joe Scudder's again. a white man. He's happy to reclaim his whiteness and his <laughs> living in full caucasity. Caucasity. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm using that. And I'm, I'm just letting you go right now to your face. I'm going to use that and not giving you credit for it's it. It's all good, brother. I'm just letting you know. Uh, <laughs> this is a shared space. <laughs> I'm just being real with you. Um, but yeah, so it was definitely letting everyone know just kind of, you know, after 15 years or, you know, how long it's been, you know, where did all these people land? Mm -hmm. Like, how did their arcs play out no, that's dope I, i'm glad you tied it together uh obviously you have a lot of how different are the foreign exchange fans to the little brother fans i know a lot of them are together you know because i'm i'm one of those Some of, thank you brother i don't know if it's a lot yeah it's yeah it's <laughs> but, but i feel like it's it's so it's like i'll meet people who won't what even you mean pooh dude i i'll tell you what i mean yeah go ahead we go were ahead. in dallas texas <laughs> right 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 we get in the uber like, cause we we send our we send our boys to the show. They our, our road manager, our crew, they go first and they set up and and then we show up about thirty minutes prior. So we get we get an Uber and we riding and the girl in the car and she's she's driving and you know we just talking, having a conversation, and then you know she's like, where y'all going? Da da da. And then she realizes who he is. Mm. So she said, oh my god, like I love your voice, like I love your group, like whatever, I love your songs. And so, you know, talking or whatever, and... And she's like, this ass, where are you going yeah, tonight? <laughs> yeah, where are you going tonight? And then, in a specific moment, we're backstage, because we we just invited her to the show, and she said, who, what do you do? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't take no offense to it. <laughs> like, I was just like, "Yo, where well, I'm actually part of the original group, Little Brother. She was like... Prior to the Ford oh. Right, 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 yeah. She was like, oh, Little okay. Brother. So she still didn't really get it she until we got, we on, got stage. on stage. Yeah. And then she told me, she was like, I was just over there downloading every album y'all had on the side. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. Like, in real time, we seen a foreign exchange fan become, become a little brother fan. Become a little brother fan. Yeah, man. Like, it's, they're, they're two different audiences. I mean, there is some overlap. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But for a lot of ways, there are two very different audiences. And I mean, the, th the thing that's just funny, man, and I even tell this just to artists, like, like, you're starting over every time you put out a new project. And so it's just like, it's like, nigga, I know, I know polo. I may not know chaps. You feel me? Like that shit is <laughs> it's different. You know what I mean? It's like so, you know, when we with with F E, like that's like yeah, that's like your your R and B fans. That's like your your, you know, like that's like Survive. it's people in that lane. Yeah, but like it's it's it, sometimes it don't always like and, I, and not only does it not always translate. I mean, let me be clear. Let to show you how much it always does translate, nigga. I can be at an Effie show and like this is Effie, you know, Foreign Exchange, nigga. I could do a solo song off my solo album at a Foreign Exchange show and it'll be like, mm, okay, that was cute. That was cute. Give us It'd our be cute. Shit. Like I'd be looking like them. Like Sing some more. Yo, they, I'd be looking like Drake and got them camp flogged on. Nigga. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you, you hold the mic out to sing. It's like, oh, y'all, oh, yeah. okay. Y'all don't, don't know loving it. Don't, no, Boo, nigga. And don't care. Boo. And don't, <laughs> Get your ass. <laughs> turn that shit I off. Mean, that, that, that even worked like with Little Brother. I, with Little Brother, it's like we have to, we was like, yo, we want to do, you know, like some couple solo songs. And and I had to really sit there and think about. It. I said, like, "Yo, if I'm gonna do solo, so I got to do them shits off sleepers off the first album." When we when that happened in the midst of Little Brother, because mm -hmm. to go outside of that you post Little people. Brother, mm -hmm. I don't know who's in here that's just a poo fan. <laughs> I don't boo like, straight up. Like, boo. Like, what's, what's that shit? That's new. Right. <laughs> you try to get my sleepers. That shit 15 years old. So yeah. so nah, bro. It's it's a little overlap. Um, but I I have to treat them like totally separate. Totally separate brands. Hey, yeah. two two more things. Uh, somebody that y'all are a producer or artist mm -hmm. who y'all would have liked to work with through y'all career, but haven't had a chance to yet. 
man, I still want to work with, I got <laughs> his three, actually. Still haven't done nothing with DJ Premier. You oh, know, shout crazy. out to Premier. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah, New yeah. Gangstar album out. Okay. Um, DJ Quick. Yeah, that'd Ooh. be hard. Um, Pharrell. Yeah. And I got to add one more. Battle Cat. Oh, you want to follow Battle Cat? Damn right, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call Battle Cat right after. No, you. Battle Cat is Shout a fuck. Out. Listen, I'm, man. I'm like Cat. You gotta fuck with the homies. I say it all the time, man. Like, you know, I always say DJ Quick is very outside of the West Coast. He's very underrated. Like people don't recognize, sure. you know, what what he like who he really is. Mm-hmm. DJ Battle Cat is even more yeah. underrated. Yeah, yeah, definitely you know, more underrated. Yeah. Way more underrated. Sure. But I like. Listen, man. That's I'm, my big homie. Shout out to Cat. Bro. I was born in Virginia, bro, but I'm a West Coast nigga at heart. West Coast. Oh, I, that's why we always got along. <laughs> <laughs> I got fuck with you, fool. Oh, if I tell you, who, who would you say? Man, I would definitely say all of them. Um, you know, that's they're all people that I've just just as a music fan. Just I mean, playing like Battle Cat, man, like shit and quick. Come on, dude. Them dudes is retarded. Um, I would probably say. Um, I really. I really want to get. I want us to get another one in with Pete, like with Pete Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, probably want to get get something else in with Madlib. Um, yeah, Madlib. Off the iPad. Producers. Off the iPad. <laughs> I'm selling dope straight off the, the iPad, iPad, nigga. That Gibbs um, album is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Gibbs. That's that's my brother, man. Big ups to him. Uh, man, let me think. Uh, God, yeah, artists, I mean, for real, artists. definitely artists, Madlib. artists. Um, Don't be fire. Um, mm-hmm. artists, artists, artists. Uh, oh, uh, shit, uh, Griselda. I'd like to hear oh, you with, uh, them, with Corday. I love them. Oh, man, Corday, yo, I love him, man. Um, so, crazy thing about Corday, his mother used to record at our old studio. Wow. Oh, wow. His mom's yeah. a singer. And uh, it was so crazy, like, when he jumped off, uh, my man was hitting me and was like, yo, you you know who whose son that is, right? And I was like, nah. And he was like, yo, you remember? And you know, he said, and I'm was put his mom's name out there. He was like, "Yeah, you remember she used to record?" I was like, "Yeah, I remember." And um, <laughs> and she was a singer, and um, she was always come through studio. She was super nice. She mm-hmm. was talented. Did she have a lisp? This I don't think she did. <laughs> I think she did. The lisp are hereditary. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, it might be Cordy. He might <laughs> be a, my, my a thumb sucker or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, nah, uh, that's what's up though. One. But yeah, now nah, Cordy, now nah, I really, I really like Cordy, man. He, he's dope. And but, then uh, is there any chance that y'all like, you know, not necessarily do no music, but just you know, talk to nine. Like, nah, nah, that's done. Yeah, that chapter is closed. It's closed. Oh, and then again, it's no beef, nothing. It's just, it's just it's, yeah, you realize that's what it is, and it's like, all right. It's just what it is on. at this point. All right. All right, that's fair. Hey, well, with that being said, for the Carolinas, you and Rhapsody, uh, you know, maybe uh, do some music together? Or is that We've done of... records before. We've done okay, records. Okay, We've okay. done stuff before. All right, fair enough. Yeah, there's not up. anything new. Uh, no, we did nothing new, but we did records, like, early on. Like, we did uh, the Jedi Code record with, okay, okay. Uh, with J-Lec. Um, I did like some other stuff. I don't mean to say it's like we were we were together before. Oh, cool. well, for thank sure. you guys for coming through the Hell album. Yeah. Thank y'all for having us, man. man. Finally got y'all up in here. You Is know there gonna be a tour? We're on tour, we're tour right, right now. now. When's the LA show? Thursday. Thursday. We coming. <laughs> <laughs> we pulling up. Real ninety two three. West Coast.